We are painting the Orc Hunters from the War Crow starter set, Winds from the North. Orcs are amazing fun to paint and these models are no exception as they all have beautiful sculpts. Throughout this video we will be painting vibrant green skin, defined leather and cloth and tying paint schemes together with oil washes. Let's get started. I began the paint job by marking out all of the metallics with Scale 75's black metal metallic paint. You will notice right away that the models are primed purple rather than a typical black, white or grey scale. The reason for this is that as a base colour, purple is the coolest colour on the colour wheel and when adding warmer colours the purple acts as a very natural shadow that still brings variety in colour that a black would not. And because we're painting green skin, this works especially well. Rather than starting with a dark green, I used dark Prussian blue. As a shadow for the skin, the blue will be much more vibrant than if I used a dark green. It's also closer to purple on the colour wheel, so is a natural progression through warmer colours. I then started adding layers of AK deep green, whilst making sure to keep the blue in the recesses and anywhere I imagined there would be shadow. The green is lighter than the blue and makes for a natural increase in colour and light contrast as we get lighter and move to warmer colours simultaneously. This is then pushed to AK Frog Green which is a very yellow green and will bring warmer and lighter contrast to the highlights. With that we have moved around the colour wheel from a dark blue up to almost a light yellow. It gives a very vivid finish to the skin that progressive greens would not. With the skin where I wanted it, I moved on to blocking in some more colours. The Orcs of the Northern Tribe's hair colour is reflective of their position within the tribe. Rath Manes have vivid red hair to signify their leadership, while Wise Manes, who were once Rath Manes, have hair that has lost its colour and faded. These Orcs are the young uns and have black hair, so I went ahead and painted them all black. The hair is something we can come back to later, but for now I wanted to figure out how to paint the clothing. The orcs have all sorts of cloth, leather and fur. These materials have very similar colours, but their textures often read differently. I aimed for having everything in a brown spectrum, but to adapt each material's lightness and depth of brown. Starting with the trousers, I kept them fairly light with a mix of dark umbra and golden brown. This mix was then lightened more with a bright warm grey for the highlights. The leather straps were painted with a much deeper mahogany that made for a strong contrast with the light trousers. For the fur I wanted to keep some purple for the depths and worked up by mixing in light umber and ivory for the highlights. The fur and the cloth had quite a cool brown, so to give the leather a warmer contrast, I added some orange to the mahogany for the highlights before adding some ivory. This helped make all the straps stand out from the rest of the model with a warmer tone. Bones got worked on with light umber and ivory so that they were closer to white than any of the other browns on the model. Now with all the clothing complete, I returned to the orcs faces to add some detail. Taking a pale purple, I marked out the eye sockets, lower lip and inner ears. This was further highlighted with an even paler purple. To paint the eyes, it's good to use a brush with a fine point. However, the tip can often dry out before you reach the model. To prevent this, I use a drop of Vallejo Airbrush Flow Improver as a retardant. The paint stays wet for longer and it's easier to control. The white of the eyes is then applied and finally the pupil spotted with black. It almost never goes perfectly the first time, so expect to have to do it a few times until you get a result you are happy with.
Much of the model was complete, so I came back to the hair to give it some better definition. Hair is naturally satin and reflective of light, so adding a highlight is helpful to give the hair some life. Mixing some black and white to make a grey, I then added a touch of blue to make a pale blue grey. That works nicely for hair reflections. The hair can then be carefully highlighted and some lighter highlights added to these for where the reflection is strongest. Other details that needed work were the teeth. Adding some ivory to the edges of each tooth helps them to stand out and be well defined from one another. With the models finished with the acrylics, they were looking good, if not a bit bright in places. Now it was time to bring all the colors together with the oil color wash. For the orc skin, I thinned down magenta oil color with petroleum and covered all areas of the green skin. After giving the models a few minutes, I then returned with a makeup sponge to remove the oil paint from the surface of the model. The acrylic stays unaffected and where the oil paint is removed, the acrylic shines through. Some of the magenta then stays in the recesses and shadow areas. Bringing the model back to its earlier purple base and giving even more color variation that still ties together nicely, giving a vibrant finish. The same was then done for the rest of the model using a burnt umber oil color. As this is removed, all the colors underneath still show variants from one another, but are all tied together very closely by the oil wash. It gives the clothing a very worn in natural look as if the orc has been wearing his armor for a very long time and could probably do with a shower. To finalize the miniatures, we had to tackle their bases. I painted the base a burnt umber, added some uniform green for some patches of grass and made up a gray for any rocks the orcs were standing on. As they are from the north, they also needed a bit of snow. So I marked out some areas with ivory paint and then added snow texture over the ivory. The models came out really well in my opinion. The green of the skin looks alive and the clothing well lived in. They were also a lot of fun to paint and I love how using some simple color theory can go a long way to make vibrant colors really pop on a model. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and let me know what you thought down in the comments. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. I will be painting more of the Hegemony and Northern Tribes models from the Winds from the North starter set, but I'll be releasing them as time-lapse videos. So if you want to see the full process, please check them out when they are released. I look forward to seeing you all for the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.